Let's talk about electrolytes because the truth is they can make or break your experience on keto. When electrolytes are low or imbalanced, we can experience side effects such as headaches, fatigue, muscle cramps, heart palpitations, and bloating. This is because electrolytes are essential minerals that play key roles in several functions throughout the body. They regulate nerve and muscle function, hydrate the body, balance blood acidity and blood pressure, and help rebuild damaged tissues. And on any variation of a low carb diet, we require more electrolytes. Because when we limit carbs in our diet, our insulin drops. And this is a good thing, especially if you're trying to reverse insulin resistance, type two diabetes, or PCOS, or even just balance your blood sugar and lose weight. But our kidneys excrete more sodium when insulin is low. And this disrupts other electrolytes, including potassium, magnesium, and calcium as well. So in today's video, we are going to be going over the four main electrolytes. We're gonna be talking about why they're important, signs you're not getting enough, and how much of each you should be consuming. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Kate. I'm a certified health and nutrition coach. I post videos twice a week here on YouTube talking all things insulin resistance, weight loss, sleep, and more. So if you're ready to take control of your metabolic health, make sure to click that subscribe button. And you can also find me on TikTok and Instagram where I share new posts every single day. Let's start off talking about arguably the most important electrolyte, which unfortunately has a lot of misconceptions surrounding it. And that electrolyte is sodium. Sodium is essential for the contraction of muscles, with the largest and most important muscle being the heart. If you're experiencing heart palpitations on a keto diet, I would definitely take a look at your sodium intake. Other signs of low sodium include headaches, fatigue, low blood pressure, and trouble focusing. Now, it's important to distinguish the difference between sodium and salt, because I think this throws a lot of people off when they're trying to figure out how much they're consuming. Salt is made up of sodium and chloride, so this means that one gram of salt is not equal to one gram of sodium. In reality, there's a bit under 400 milligrams of sodium in one gram of salt, which means you might be consuming less than half as much as you thought you were. So how much should we be aiming for in a day? The general population needs between three to six grams. But as I already said, when we're eating a low carb or ketogenic diet, we need more. Five grams is a good place to start if you're relatively sedentary. That's equal to about two and a quarter teaspoons of salt. Now exercise and physical activity will increase your need for sodium more because we do lose it through our sweat. And also if you live in a hot climate, you're gonna need more as well. So if you're active, seven grams is usually a good place to start, which is roughly three teaspoons of salt. You can get a little bit of sodium through food, but it's pretty difficult if you're sticking to a mainly whole foods keto diet, which is why using a high quality salt on your food and salting your water is important. Now, before we go any further, I just wanna clear up a misconception. And that misconception is that salt and sodium causes hypertension. This isn't true. 90% of hypertension cases are a side effect of insulin resistance. Yes, salt can trigger a temporary increase in blood pressure, but so does exercise. A temporary increase is not a bad thing. I have a whole video that goes more into debunking this myth and talking about the root cause of hypertension, which I will link above if you want to know more. But just know that sodium is very important on low carb diets. And if you're experiencing any of the side effects we spoke about earlier, fatigue, headaches, muscle cramps, heart palpitations, these are signs you're not getting enough. Now, as I said, salting your food and adding salt to your water is important, but I also wanna highlight Sodi's Everyday Hydration Salts. This is a well-rounded electrolyte supplement that has been specifically formulated for low-carb diets. A lot of other electrolyte supplements on the market have added sugar, they have added sweetener, and have other fillers, which of course we want to be avoiding as much as possible on keto diets. Sodi has none of that along with more of what we actually want, which is electrolytes. If you wanna check them out, you can head to hckate.com forward slash SODI. I'll put the link in the description box down below as well. And you can use code KATE15 to save 15% off your order. 
Because honestly, if you've just started keto and you're experiencing any of the side effects that are commonly labeled as the keto flu, oftentimes these come down to an electrolyte imbalance. So supplementing can help. And if you're just about to get started, you can avoid the keto flu entirely. But next let's talk about potassium. Potassium and sodium try to remain in balance within the body. When sodium intake is low, it not only affects our sodium levels, but our potassium levels as well. The kidneys will try to reabsorb more sodium while excreting potassium to try to maintain the balance. Signs of a potassium deficiency are muscle cramping, muscle twitching, and heart palpitations. On the keto diet, you require between three to five grams of potassium in a day. This is easier to get from food than sodium is. Some good sources include avocados, bacon, bone broth, and salmon. Again, if you're active, you're probably gonna require a little bit more. If you don't think you're getting enough with diet, you can supplement it additionally, but just be careful because too much concentrated potassium can be dangerous. Too much sodium and your body just excretes the excess, but with potassium, it can be a bit more dangerous. So try to get it mainly from whole foods where you can. Next up, we have magnesium. Magnesium is needed to maintain proper nerve and muscle function. It supports our immune system and regulates our heartbeat. Signs of a deficiency include muscle cramps and twitching, heart palpitations, fatigue, and constipation. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, the deficiency signs for sodium, potassium, and magnesium are all pretty similar. How do you know which one you're low in? I would say start by upping your sodium. If that doesn't make a difference, then up your magnesium, and then finally move on to potassium. Most people need about 400 milligrams of magnesium in a day, but again, on low carb diets, your needs might be higher. And finally, we're gonna talk about calcium. Calcium is important for our bone health, for muscle contractions, and blood clotting. The RDA is set at one gram per day, but a lot of experts think this number is too high. This is because calcium needs vitamin D3 and K2 to be absorbed into the body, and most modern diets are highly lacking in both of these. To make up for the poor absorption, the thinking is to just increase calcium, but increasing calcium alone can be dangerous. This is why cheese is so, so great to include on a keto diet. It includes all three nutrients, calcium, vitamin D3, and vitamin K2 in good amounts. Now, before we wrap up, one final thing I want to say is that another sign of an electrolyte imbalance can be cravings. So if that's something that you're struggling with on keto, then really look at your electrolyte intake and your sodium intake especially. Anyways guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know in the comment section down below if you prioritize electrolytes on your keto diet and the foods or the supplements you use to do this. I'm also gonna link Sodi's Everyday Hydration Salt in the description box down below, so make sure to check them out. If you did enjoy this video, you might also enjoy my video on the 20 best foods to eat on a keto diet. You can check it out here. If you wanna catch up on my most recent upload, you can find it here. And if you wanna check out my coaching programs, including my seven day keto crash course, which comes with a sample shopping list and meal plan, you can find that here. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time. Bye.